Hey guys, Jared from Better Holsters here. Today, we're going to show you how to clean your gun. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. First and foremost, safety. Safety is the most important part about gun handling. So we're going to go over the proper way to clear and unload a handgun to make sure it's safe for cleaning. We're going to first do that by grabbing it and pointing it in a safe direction, just like this. You're going to release the magazine and verify that it's been cleared. Next, you're gonna pull back on the slide, lock it back, and visually and physically inspect the chamber to make sure there's nothing in it. Once you've done that step, we can start with the gun cleaning. So now that our gun is clear and safe to handle, we're gonna go over what tools you're gonna to need to clean these guns. So first and foremost, safety goggles are a good idea. You're dealing with high compression springs, high compression lubricants and solvents that could be spraying out. So safety goggles are a good idea and gloves are optional. I have cuts and scrapes all over my right hand, so that's why I'm using a glove, but it's not necessary. It's helpful, but some of these chemicals are pretty safe for your skin as well as other fabrics. You're definitely gonna want a good CLP or cleaner lube and protectant. I use Safari Charlie personally because I like the smell. Smells good, doesn't have a bad lingering odor or anything like that, and it works really well for cleaning. You're gonna want some lubricating gun oil as well for once the gun's all clean, you're gonna wanna make sure it's nice and oiled for a smooth functioning firearm. Old t-shirts or t-shirt rags or some type of cloth are always good. I prefer old t-shirt rags because they don't leave a bunch of lint everywhere. A nylon brush, something soft bristle to not really scratch up any finishes or anything, but also hard enough to where you can easily get some of that built up dirt and grime off. Q-tips are optional, but they really do help get into those nooks and crannies of the slides and things like that. So I always have some Q-tips on me. Another optional thing would be a boar snake. I prefer boar snakes over the old method of a push rod and cleaning patches just because it's simpler and I feel like it gets the job done better, but either way is good. A cleaning kit is always a good option. You have quite a selection of things. This is what most local gun shops are gonna have. And again, it's a good option to use, good option to have for larger guns especially. Um, but so we're gonna run through everything and show you how all these work. You're gonna wanna make sure and consult your owner's manual to make sure that breaking down your firearm is the proper way and everything like that. Uh, also make sure you're in a well-ventilated area because some of these solvents can get kind of stinky and you don't wanna be breathing that stuff in for an extended period of time. Uh, with this, we have a Glock 17 today. Glocks are very simple to break down, very easy to field strip and clean. Uh, most semi-automatic handguns have very similar methods of breaking them down for cleaning, but if you ever get confused or hung up, always look at the uh, instruction manual that came with your firearm. So we're gonna start by taking down our Glock 17. If you look on this side and on this side, there's little tabs. Those tabs need to be pulled down at the same time in order to release the slide. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to put my thumb around the beaver tail of the Glock, grip up top and pull back the slide ever so slightly. And you should be able to hold it like this pretty easily. Next, I'm gonna get both my fingers like so, pull, dab on, pull down on the tab at the same time, release the slide forward, and normally you'd pull the trigger to release it. That's why making sure the gun is completely unloaded and safe is very important. But since we took the firing pin out of this one for our fit checking here at Vetter Holsters, the trigger doesn't work the same, so technically it's already been pulled, so the slide is just gonna come right off like that. You have your upper and your slide and your lower receiver now. What we're gonna to do to take apart the upper receiver for cleaning is we're gonna take off the recoil spring and the barrel. By doing that, you're gonna to wanna to get a good grip on the slide, grab the recoil spring and push it in and lift it right out just like that. Next, you're gonna grab the barrel, tap it down like that and it should pop out just like that, simple as that. Normally, you're going to have a little firing pin channel right here with a firing pin in it, but as I said before, we took the firing pin out, so this empty hole may look a little different from yours, but either way, it doesn't affect how it's going to be cleaned or anything like that. Let's get started. All right, the first thing I attack is the barrel. Usually, it's one of the dirtiest places on the slide, so I'm gonna move the slide and the recoil spring out of my way so I can focus purely on the barrel. To start off, I always like to grab a little bit of CLP, cleaner lube and protectant, Spray some inside the barrel, get it all nice and coated in there. And then I'm gonna take my push rod with the copper brush attachment for nine millimeters since the Glock 17 shoots nine millimeter, insert it into the barrel and just push it through. Just like that. Comes out the other side. I always like to take it off at that point. That way I'm not dragging a bunch of dirt and grime back through. And then I visually check the barrel to make sure that it's nice and clean. 
There's still a little bit of stuff in there, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reattach the copper brush, push it through the barrel again, remove it, visually inspect, and we are looking pretty good right now. So that's all you're gonna need this copper brush for. We can put that aside and move on to the next thing. So now that we've gotten a lot of that grime and buildup off with the copper brush, we're gonna move on to getting all that out and making sure our barrel's nice and clean. There's plenty of methods to do this. It kind of depends on what you have in your kit and what you prefer. If your kit has one of these cotton swabs, it's a really good way to use that. But I'm gonna show you all the methods, of course. The most common one being a cotton pad push through. So you get that same guide rod that you had, find the attachment for nine millimeter, and then you're gonna fold up your little patch comes in a big square. You're gonna fold it up however you need to. And then you're gonna fit it right through that push through. You're gonna pull it through, make sure it's about 50-50, and you should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do, put that through the barrel, push it through, inspect it, and you see all that buildup, all that grime. What I don't want to do is yet again, pull it back through because I just wiped all this stuff out. I don't want to deposit it back in. So I'm just going to take this out, pull this back through. And in this point, since the cotton pad is dirty, I would get a new one. I'd get a new one, use the same method and push it through until it was clean, until it came through spotless. But to show you some other methods, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now remove the push through tool. and attach the swab. Now the swab kind of does the same thing that the push through pad does. It just obviously it's going to get a little bit dirtier so you may not want to use it as much whereas the pads you just take off and throw away. But same method through the barrel completely then remove it. Now this is pretty clean. There's still a little bit of grime and build up but our barrel is getting much cleaner now. So visually inspecting it, it's shiny. There's not much buildup in there at all, if any, but just to be safe, I'm gonna do one more pass and I'm gonna do it with an optional tool that I personally prefer. This is called a boar snake. A boar snake usually has a little brass weight on the end of it with a rope. Then you have copper bristles at the beginning and then a bunch of weaved yarn-like material that's gonna pull a lot of that grime through. So this is the most simple way. If you have a boar snake, you don't need to do the push through method or anything like that, unless there's a lot of really nasty buildup. But you know, we'd do the same thing at the beginning. We'd spray our barrel with some solvent, make sure it kind of coats it just to get it nice and good. And one thing you wanna make sure you're doing is you don't wanna be adding oil necessarily. CLP is a lubricant and a cleaner and a protectant, but you don't want gun oil in your barrel. It's gonna mess with the performance and the ballistics and it could begin to rust. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your brass weight Drop it through the barrel as so, pull it through. And you're just gonna pull the boar snake all the way through. And it should be a tight fit for the proper caliber because it really gets it nice and saturated. Visually inspecting, my barrel is completely shiny. There's no buildup and it's bone dry, which is what we want. We want it to be completely bone dry. So now that we've cleaned the inside of your barrel, we're gonna wanna move on to the outside. All right, so we've cleaned the inside of the barrel. Now we're gonna move on to the outside, especially the feed rim, because that can get pretty dirty. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my nylon brush, my t-shirt rag, and of course, my Safari Charlie. I'm gonna give a nice spray on the feed ramp. Should cover most of the outside. I'm gonna get my nylon brush and just start going at it. Just like this. So now I've scrubbed the outside of the barrel. I'm gonna take my t-shirt rag. I'm gonna wipe all that solvent off. Just give it a good rub down. Check the cloth, you can see right there, we got plenty of buildup off. With parkerized and other darker finished barrels and things like that, it's not really gonna be easy to tell, but you'll be able to see carbon fouling and stuff build up. But with this one, this one is getting very clean. So with that being said, since I sprayed a little bit more of that CLP, 
got a little bit more in the barrel. I always like to clean the inside of the barrel first, just because when you're pulling those swabs through, some of the buildup can get on the outside of the barrel. So either way, you may have to go back and do a little run through, but that's what's great about a boar snake. Grab a boar snake, drop it in, pull it through. Look at that. All right, so with the recoil spring, it's very straightforward, very easy, pretty much the same way we just cleaned the feed ramp. I'm gonna set it down on my oil resistant gun cleaning mat, give it a good spray of Safari Charlie, work it in there, get my brush, and just go to town cleaning it. Nice and shiny, put it in my t-shirt cloth, dry it up the best I can. Obviously you won't be able to get in in between every little piece of spring and dry it perfectly, but we're gonna set it aside because we still got cleaning to do and it should be nice and dry by then. Look at that. All right, let's move on to the slide. All right, time to tackle probably one of the dirtiest parts other than the barrel. That's the slide. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna inspect the slide, look at it, see where places of heavy buildup are, which is usually gonna be back and down here, sometimes up here. Inspect the rails to make sure there's no damage or obstruction. Look all around the slide, and it looks like there's no damage or anything, it's just dirty. So let's get started. Take my trusty CLP, spray down the inside, and one thing to note, with a lot of striker fire guns, you really don't wanna saturate the firing pin channel. You don't want gunk in there. Uh, when you spray a CLP in there, it will break down solvents, but it could also clump up and that could cause performance issues. So just make sure you're not really saturating this area and letting a bunch fall into here. You don't normally need to take the firing pin out for cleaning. Uh, obviously go off your manufacturer's recommendation in the manual, but that's usually not necessary at all. Just make sure when you're cleaning, you're kind of staying away from spraying directly into that firing pin channel. Now that it's saturated, I'm gonna take my trusty nylon brush. I'm just gonna go through, get a lot of that gunk and build up off. Go down, make sure you're getting into those little rails. And I am gonna go over back here just because there is kind of some buildup. Make sure it's clean. And I'm gonna clean the top where the barrel sits right here. I'm gonna flip it over. And just this little area right here can get really nasty. This is where your firing pin comes out and hits your primer. So there's usually a lot of buildup and grime back here. So cleaning this is always a good idea. Just think of any surface on here that could be dirty and just give it a once over. Depending on where your barrel is, you may have some buildup around the front here. If your barrel is more recessed in the slide, you'll definitely have a lot of buildup, but if you're using a threaded barrel, you won't have as much. So don't expect a whole lot, but it's always good to make sure everything's getting cleaned appropriately. So now I've loosened up a lot of the grime and dirt. I'm gonna take my t-shirt rag yet again, open it up, and I'm just gonna go in here and wipe out all that solvent and all that grime. Look at that, nasty. I'm gonna go over every surface that I scrubbed, constantly changing and flipping around my t-shirt rag or towel or whatever you use just to make sure you're not Spread in some dirt and grime that you just cleaned off right back into it. Clean up the outside. Make sure that's good to go. And I usually like to grab the t-shirt rag or the towel and just kind of run it through here. Just like that, just to get that little area where the firing pin sits. And I am seeing some buildup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my Q-tip. I'm gonna go in and just kinda scrape it away. So I'm gonna clean all that out. I'm gonna get the tip and I'm just gonna run through the rail really quick just to make sure. Look at all that that was in the rail. So this one's pretty saturated. I'm gonna grab a new one. 
Do this side. Look at that. Run through again. I'm basically just gonna clean until there's no more grime rubbing off. There's no more dirt. Looks good to me. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just wipe off the outside. Just cause I got oily hands, oily gloves, overspray. Get that nice and clean. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to the lower. As always, nylon brush, trusty Safari Charlie CLP, and my t-shirt rags. I'll probably use a few Q-tips here and there as well, but it kind of depends. So just like with the upper, you're gonna wanna visually inspect this, the lower receiver. Just make sure everything's where it needs to be. Nothing looks out of place or broken. This lower is actually fairly clean. Now with the lower, I don't like fully saturating it by just spraying directly into it just because there's little places in there that I can't get to dry out. So what I usually do is I get my nylon brush, spray that down, and then I go in and start getting to work on scrubbing it. Make sure you wanna clean these rails, these locking blocks right here. All right, so now I've loosened up all that carbon deposit, all that dirt and lint and everything. I'm gonna go through with my t-shirt rag again. I'm gonna go over everywhere that I just scrubbed. Now I'm gonna get a Q-tip and I'm gonna go into these little fine areas make sure everything gets completely cleaned up. Visually inspect it once again. It's looking good to me. Let's get back to assembling and lubricating. Now that your gun's all clean and shiny, let's gather everything together and assemble it. For this step, all you're really gonna need is a good lubricant. For lubricant, I personally like to use Hops Number no. 9 gun oil, but I know Wilson Combat makes good gun oil. Safari Charlie even makes a gun oil. It really depends on your preference. Other than that, let's get started on the lubrication points. First, we're gonna assemble the slide. What I like to do is I like to put a drop of oil on the slide right on the inside where the barrel sits. That's me personally. Next, before I put the barrel back in, I like to put a little bit of oil right about here. Just because anywhere metal is gonna be touching metal quite a bit, it's always good to lubricate. There is a such thing as over lubrication, which you do wanna avoid because it'll just collect gunk and you'll have to clean your gun even sooner and it could, could cause performance issues. But for this sake, two drops of oil aren't gonna hurt it. Slide the barrel back in like so. Take your recoil spring and there should be a flat side. There's gonna be another side of a little button. You're gonna put that button through the front of the slide, push in, and you're good to go there. Some people like to put a little bit of oil on the recoil spring. I do every now and then, but just because we gave this thing a really good cleaning, just put a little tiny bit of oil on there. Move it around, and we're good to go. I'm gonna wipe my hand off so I'm not getting oil all over the gun. The upper is now completely assembled. We're gonna move on to lubricating the lower portion. Some people like to lubricate the inside the rails of the upper. Some people like to do the locking block and the rails on the lower. Again, that's really up to your preference. I like to do one drop here, one drop on the other side. Then I go back here and I do one drop there and one drop there. Grab the gun, slide it back on, make sure that it's on the lower as best as it can be. Looks good to me. Don't forget your magazine. And again, you always wanna make sure your gun's clear, always get in the habit of checking to make sure visually and physically. And as, as you can see, there's a little bit of oil from my hands, a little bit of oil on the barrel. So I'm just gonna go through here Wipe it down. And now, 
your gun is clean and ready to go. So now that your gun's all nice and clean, you can head to the range, put it in the safe, or get back to carrying it. Whatever you choose to do, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of our future videos and content, subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.